Shalom, y'all, Shalom, Shalom. First, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Call Haloyim Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Haraka Kodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwathas, keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Job, chapter 12, and verse 6. It says, The tabernacles of robbers prosper, and they that provoke power are secure, into whose hand power bringeth abundantly. All right, so Job 9.24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And since the earth been given into their hands, these devils have been living deliciously off of the backs and sweating, blood, sweating, tears of the most highest people, you know, um, and they've been living like that for a while, but they are secure until they are not, and we are seeing the beginnings of that not, right, and the reason why, go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and verse 1 this is just one one reason the main reason is um they're not the most highest people right so they're not promised the kingdom forever and ever even forever that goes to us you so-called black so-called native americans so-called hispanics and all our brethren around the world all of so-called negro descent right but this is another factor. This is Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to Yahweh, but a just way to his delight. It can't be all wicked. We got to have some balance. So that righteousness has to come into play. And we can't be on the receiving end of that wickedness always. It has to turn. And we're seeing that turn. Right? And go to the book of Proverbs. Um, let's see. Chapter 22, I believe. And verse 16, it says, He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Right? And we're seeing that come to want as we speak. Now, directly, the things that's going on today is not affecting the higher ups. You you best believe that because they the ones that's doing all of this. They the ones that created the so the, or they are the ones that created the so called war. That created the 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 famines and you know all of the plight and, and trials and tribulations of the day because of the agenda and the agenda is a new world, the new digital era, right? The um the new um industrial revolution, right? And that term has been thrown around. This ain't just something that just made up. This is actual factuals of what's going on today. Right? But the most I saying, what y'all planning is not gonna come to pass. Y'all gonna y'all gonna be found wanting. And at the end of the day, you're gonna suffer for it. Matter of fact, you're gonna suffer for everything that you've done to this earth. Right? So, with that, let me let this video play and I'll be back. Well, the president is angry, my friends, angry that people are complaining about not being able to afford fuel and gas and food. Then they realize he's changing lives. I don't want to hear any more of these lies about reckless spending. We're changing people's lives. Now, Americans may be wondering why energy costs are so high, whether we're talking about gasoline or how to uh, heat their homes or cool their homes. And Biden is very keen to blame what he calls the Putin tax. But what is happening is precisely what he said would happen if he became president. And the impact of Biden's anti-fossil fuel policies is being felt across the country. But to be fair to President Biden, he was honest during the election campaign. He said he would back these green policies 
even if they caused considerable pain. Three consecutive American presidents have enjoyed stints of explosive economic growth due to a boom in oil and natural gas production. As president, would you be willing to sacrifice some of that growth, even knowing potentially that it could displace thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of blue collar workers in the interest of transitioning to that greener economy? The answer is yes. That's $7.29 a gallon for a small car with a 12 gallon tank. It would cost you $87 to fill it all the way up. Number one, no more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Gas prices are so high, the Isabella, Isabella County Sheriff's Office here says they've actually blown through their fuel budget already, so they will respond to some non-emergency calls by phone. I've never seen anything like Putin's tax on both food and gas. Not so much a Putin tax as a Biden tax. And the Biden administration still hasn't learnt anything. Listen to its climate czar, John Kerry, say they don't need to drill for more gas and oil. And energy security worry is driving a lot of the thoughts now about, oh, we need more drilling of gas. We need more drilling of this. We need to go back to coal. No, we don't. We absolutely don't. And we have to prevent a false narrative from entering into this or, again, uh, pun right. So, as far as the low-level Edomites go, and the wicked of the world, and when I say the wicked of the world, I'm not. I'm speaking about all other nations, all heathens, and you know, two-thirds of the Most High's people. As far as they go, the Most High said He's going to create a famine on this earth, right? And the Most High uses men to do his will. He don't have to get off his throne to do nothing. Right? And right now he got Esau doing the damn thing. Right? So, let me go to, uh, let me see. Let me go to the book of Sirach. Chapter 40. And uh, verse 9 says death and bloodshed strife and sword calamities famine tribulation and the scourge these things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood right because it's time this this place is 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 becoming a thing of the past right it's becoming a thing of the past so the old world that people are used to where the wicked are just you know, booming, and everybody want to be them, those days are coming to an end because this world is coming to an end. And, of course, like I said all the time, when I say the world coming to an end, I'm not talking about this earth. I'm talking about the people that are ruling this earth right now and that have been ruling this earth for quite some time. Their reign is coming to an end, and the Most High is building up his righteous world, his righteous kingdom, and starting with the prophets. Starting with the people that stop and repent, right? And come back to who they are through faith and works and maintain that, right? In the midst of wickedness, right? But in the meantime, between time, it's finna get ill out here, right? So, let me go to the book of Sirach, chapter 39, and verse 29 fire and hail and famine and death all these were created for vengeance right this is the most high's vengeance that we're seeing what we are witnessing is the most high Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua. we are witnessing the most high Yahweh fight for us and it's gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse cause he's destroying a kingdom right now as far as the low-level Edomites go, this gonna take them into a full-fledged civil war, and it's gonna take the wicked or the other, or the, it's gonna take the heathens and the wicked or the Most High's people into that civil war too, right? And it's gonna be because of trials, tribulations, and poverty, and in in, in an extreme measure, right? So Second Ezra chapter fifteen bring this out all the time because it's relevant. All right, Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. 
says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So they don't, they, these people ain't going ain't gonna to give a damn about what a, a President Sleepy, Creepy Joe got to say. They don't give a damn about what a governor got to say, what a sheriff got to say. In fact, it ain't got so bad now to where in certain places, the police are not coming to answer every emergency call. They picking and choosing where they going because the budget that they have for gas, they running through it so fast that they're not able to. So imagine the gas go up two, two extra dollars. The police will not will, will be null and void. You're going to have to handle that on your own. It, this is the time that we're coming into. This man keep blaming it on the Russian-Ukraine war, but they saying that that war could go on for months, maybe even years. So if that's what you're blaming on, you basically saying it's not going to get better. You got China and Taiwan in the midst. They about to start bumping in a minute, too. And there's some I, I, I read earlier or I saw earlier on the video where America is, they are about to stop accepting Chinese imports. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I believe I saw that. It's about to get real out here, man. All right? Let me finish this out. Second Edge chapter 15. And uh, verse 17, it says, A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, whose pride? The damn devil. Right? The city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's thus says the Lord. All right now, as far as them higher ups who causing all of this, trying to push forth some some uh, wicked agenda, and you can read about that agenda in Revelation chapter thirteen. All right, um, this is for them. This is Isaiah chapter forty seven and verse one. It says, "Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground." There is no throne, no daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. They believe that they finna achieve this thing, but in actuality, they 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 real real talk being set up, set up for the fail, for real, for real. Right? It says, take the millstones and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. They been exposed, and they been exposed for so long now. But it's to the point to where now they really can't hide it. And they don't even feel like hiding it, for real, for real. If you listen to them talk, they'll tell you their plans are just blatant. I've heard Sleepy Creepy Joe. I've heard the WHO. I've heard the CDC. I've heard um, um, higher-ups in, in um, Germany, higher-ups in France, um, um, certain parts of Europe, speak about a new world order or an order of the new world blatant and open right but you know for whatever reason people are not caring well I, I know the reason the reason is the spirit ain't, be, ain't ain't dealing with everybody right everybody don't have an eye to see in the ear to hear right but it's happening right so um, go to verse 7 it says and thou saidest I shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. They forgot about the prophecies pertaining to their to they whole little scheme. It's not going to work out because Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. That don't mean Esau can keep creating worlds. No. The world that we living in now, this is the peak of Esau's world and it's ending. So that means it's the beginning of Jacob's. Jacob got his name changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons. Those 12 sons had children and they became the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel got lost in slavery. 
Their culture got lost. Their name got lost. They forgot who they were. And it's a prophecy in the book. Ezekiel 37 that one day they will remember who they are and they will put back on their nationality. They will put back on their culture, put back on their name and start living for them. And when they do so, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah would then start to fight for them. All right? Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 8, it says, Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. The people that's in charge of the sorceries and the enchantments are the higher ups. They're the ones that created this false world. Right? It says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not, not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. That's what they got to look forward to. So, at the end of the day, this whole kingdom is going down. And if you operating with the mindset of this kingdom, you're going down with it. Read Revelation 18. You're going down with it. <laughs> Read Micah chapter 2, verse 10. This ain't your place of rest. So if you attach yourself to this place, it's going to lead you to destruction. And I'm speaking to you so-called blacks, so-called natives, so-called uh, um, Hispanics, and all our brethren around the world, all the so-called Negro descent. As far as everybody else, your judgment is already set. If you don't die, you're going into slavery. And even if you do die, when you come back to this earth, you will be a servant. All right. So, with that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Ratazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Haloyim Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Harakakudash Shalom Yashalom.